Hello gents. Welcome to another edition of the Long Range Corner. Sorry I wasn't around last week. It was man, don't really have an excuse, just didn't do it. But I did get out flying last week, which was good. No real long range, but just did a nice flight at the beach. And yeah. But so what have I got for you tonight? Tonight I have finally received my brain FPV Radix. So today I just started installing that. I had uh, my nine inch Alien. That was the, yeah, right there. The Alien that used to sit there. Well, it's now on my desk. So here it is in all its glory. And basically what I'm doing, I am installing the Radix. It previously was with a KISS and Core PNP Pro setup. And I'm ripping that out because I always had some fairly major issues with it. Unfortunately, it never really worked correctly. Uh, with the TBS VTX, it just, the video would cut out and go to black. Uh, I installed the IRC VTX in it, one of the IRC 2.4 gigahertz VTXs, and that was better, but it the OSD still didn't work. So I decided, yeah, this is my weakest quad and I really want to use this. This will eventually be a 5S build. So I said, yeah, well, let's try out the, the Radix and see how that does. So you can see that there. Let's get that in so you can see that a little bit better. Um, it's quite a nice little solution. Um, it's got that the Radix, which is the, the board on top. Let me see if I can move this out for you. And then it's got the PDB down below. And the PDB looks quite nice. Not sure how well you can see that, but so the PDB looks pretty nice. Um, it's nice, clean build. It has this ribbon cable here, wherever it is. I'm pointing to it. Yeah, there it is. That ribbon cable there, and that runs to the the Radix itself. So that's basically the the setup. Uh, it'll be run with Crossfire, obviously, of course. Um, I may remount the antenna to get better. Uh, for the moment, it's been fairly um, close range to the issues that I've had. So I've got the antenna mounted like this. But yeah, so that's what I'm doing today is I'm actually rebuilding a quad. This is the first quad I've touched in... Well, okay, no, I lied. Um, this is about the first thing I've done in, the, in a long time. I did rebuild, or I did change the motors on my Alien, like I said last week, or two weeks ago, two weeks ago said that I was going to change the motors on my Alien to the Tornado T2s, the Brother Hobby Tornado V2s, T2s, whatever the heck they are. Um, and I did that and it was quite nice. Uh, the, the video I filmed with it was smooth. It felt a lot more controlled than the, the Rotor Geek motors. So I'm happy I did that. And that's basically the only thing only flying I've done and the only tinkering I've done up until today. So today I started with this. Obviously I can't pour a beer today. Tonight's episode sponsored by Guinness. Good old Guinness. Um, yeah, so decided I'm going to redo this. Uh, of course, I had to muck about with a whole bunch of stuff. The um, power cables for the ESCs weren't long enough because they were originally going to the Alien PDB down below here. So yeah, I had to put new cables on for the ESCs. I had to shorten the, the signal wires for the ESCs as well. Those, those all run into the, the PDB, the brain PDB underneath. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's, it's a really nice little setup there. And that's evidently all goes through this one cable here. So all that is controlled. And if I recall correctly, it's got current sensing and voltage sensing on that on the PDB as well. So it's a really nice little slick setup. Uh, I can't wait to actually get out and fly it. Hopefully it'll do what I want it to do. This quad has never really flown as well as I wanted it to. With 5S, it's, it's actually kind of fun. These are the 920 kV motors. Um, the T motor, and I fly it with the nine by three carbon fiber props. T motor nine by three carbon fiber props. So these are really nice, light. Um, with five S, 
it, it's it's actually pretty fun. For us, yeah, not so fun, but so yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's that's basically what I've been doing. I want to give a shout out, thanks to Jenny for sending this nice little package out. Uh, Jenny Martin sent this out, so you can see a little dinosaur. Yes, we shall call this land our land. So yeah, uh, they sent this out, a whole bunch of stickers, battery straps, and of course the PDB and the Radix. So thank you for that. That was, um, I won that on uh, another live stream, on uh, Dead Bands live stream. Very cool stuff, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully it's going to make this quad fly like it should. That's, that's, my, that's my desire, that's my hope. Anyway. Hey, hi Peter, hi Jason, I think, J10, 1963, how are you guys doing? Or, yeah, 163. What's the 163 stand for, J10? I'm going to sit here and drink my beer. So yeah, hopefully getting out sometime. I'm actually prepping for... the 21st the 21st we have our next holiday and i'm looking forward to getting out and doing some long range flying we're, we're getting in up into the season where we're going to get snow on the mountains and of course snowy mountains is all the rage these days so yeah gotta get my flights in gotta get my videos up hello francisco how you doing Yeah, so that's this basically what I've been doing. Just mucking about with my alien. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, okay. Go. <laughs> 163 is random. Oh, man. I was hoping. You're, you're, I'm not sure if you're lucky or non lucky. Um, M. Bardine is fairly fairly ambiguous non-ambiguous uh there's a couple other ambardines out there um michelle marjorie um there's uh, a scientist that's a ambardine as well but uh in terms of last names bardine is pretty pretty unique there's not very many running around and the ones that are, are pretty much um, all my relatives. Bardeen is a fairly, it's a, uh, how do you say it? it? It originated in, Bardeen originated in the New World. So in Plymouth, somewhere around there. And basically it was a, a, a mutation of Barden with one e and that's how i know all the bardines are related because it came from that mutation in the, the the new world cool cool story cool gene genealogy there's a james bardine he is the only physicist to have won two nobel peace prizes he won his first or not peace prizes nobel prizes in physics that's it um he won his first for the transistor with Bertain and Chocolate back in 1958, somewhere around there, and maybe even earlier. And then one another one for um, superconductivity later on. So, cool little story about the name, Bardeen. Trivia. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so. FPV nicknames. FPV nicknames are hard to find. I like I like Peter's Flux FPV is very good. He's had that for ages. He went to his real name Peter for a while and then back to Flux FPV, which I think is good. Um, mine I started out with M Bardeen, of course, and then changed it to Chili Villa, because I said you know at the time when I was flying when I was first starting out. I was thinking, yeah, I'm just going to be, my audience is going to be mainly Chilean. 
and said, you know, Chili Vuela sounds a little bit better for the Chilean audience than, than M. Bardeen. And strangely enough, most of my audience is American. So uh, it's kind of worked out kind of odd because nobody knows how to pronounce Chili Vuela apart from me. Uh, chili Vuela it means chili flies. Literally. So, uh, kind of works, kind of doesn't. I think I've actually seen No Name FPV before, Francisco. I, I, I take issue, everybody, everybody is FPV. Flux FPV and I think um, there's only a few that are not, that don't have FPV in their name. Um, Stinger Swarm, of course. Uma God, of course. Uh, Mr. Steel. Who else? Sharpoo. Though I think a Sharpoo is Sharpoo FPV. I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah. So if you think about the, the guys that are really well known, they don't have FPV in their name, which is interesting. Uh, Final Glide Oz isn't FPV. Uh, Night Furry is an FPV. Lidrib is an FPV. See, they, see, you need to pick a name. You pick, need to pick a name that doesn't say FPV. If you have FPV in your name, you're not going to get famous. That, that's uh, that's the long-range corner law. I'm not sure if that's a law. I'm trying. I'm struggling to think if there's an FPV name out there. A really famous FPV guy. Nurk is Nurk FPV. Fly for image, yeah, it could be good. Um, Silver fly, something like that. I don't know. I I, I suck at coming up with names. I really do. My other nickname that I usually use is. Uh, is grime and that comes from way 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 back in the early days when I was still a, a prepubescent geek uh, I was logging into bulletin board systems which probably dates me more than I would like but uh, yeah uh, there was this game on one of the bulletin board systems called trade wars and I used to play that. And of course, for that, you needed a nickname. There was a... He's nothing the Messiah. Just <laughs> Yes, Monty Python. Um, <laughs> we shall call him Brian. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I decided... Um, I, I, I decided on... Gandalf the Grime. Not gray, not white. Gandalf the Grime. G-R-I-M-E. So, yeah, I've stuck with that nickname for quite a while. Grime is, is kind of a nickname, my nickname. Uh, used to play against a guy named Smud Enterprises. Very cool. Anyway, yeah, that's ancient, ancient history. Nobody remembers except me and probably him. Yeah. So, what's been going on in the FPV world? So, Chad Nowak is actually flying again. Actually erased. Uh, said he enjoyed it. It's good to hear. Um, Mike Virgin of Long Range Hooligans and other places. He lost his track in the mountains in the snow and just managed to find it today so well done for that ah yeah fat shark hdo's that's true i i'm looking at those i i think i want to buy some because my original hds are getting a little long on tooth uh i've had problems with the module the module connect the connector for the module has started falling out or started falling out and i tried to fix it by um, using a little CA in there and kind of screwed that up. 
so my modules didn't fit in there properly and so i had to hack it and yeah it, so it's, it's just getting um <clears throat> It is not working like it should. Let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking about replacing them with some HDOs. I'm not sure. Uh, my buddy has some Sky Zones, and I was really pleased with the reception on those. Uh, he's that's the the 5.2 kilometer flight that I did. I was using the the uh, the Sky Zones, and just the the normal module with a crosshair on it. So if they can do that good just on the on the crosshair you know yeah it, it so if i if those if those work um so good just on the crosshair how would they be on a pepper box or a helical antenna or something like that so i've been thinking about that um the only thing that gives me pause about doing that is that i wouldn't be able to use my 2.4 gigahertz module that i have and I do like that for convenience at times. Yeah, Francisco raises a good point. He says that lots of people are moving over from FPV and some are trying to find out their position. And I think that's, I understand that. I kind of sensed that coming for a while. Um, you, you probably noticed that I, I've been doing the same. You know, where do I fit in the FPV universe? And it's a hard question to ask. It's a, it's, I think just natural evolution. You know, you, you get, do something for so long. I've been doing it for four years. There's not going to be a lot of new stuff that I'm going to do. I mean, yeah, there's going to be new moves, maybe um, new places to fly. But in terms of, you know, keeping an audience each week, that's hard. That, that's, it's not something that I feel like I can do on a weekly basis to keep coming out with new places to fly, new moves, not doing the same thing over and over again. When I was talking to Trappy the a couple weeks ago here on the Long Range Corner, he mentioned it. You know, we're, we're all trying to find, do something new. We want new. We want new experiences. So, um, you see the guys that have been out there doing this for so long, what's new out there for them? What are you going to do that, that brings something new to the table? So you see Johnny FPV experimenting with like filming. So he, he was at the Audi, Audi nines, uh, him and Luke Bannister filming the snowboarders. So not really flying for himself, but flying to capture something, which I think is interesting. It's a it's an evolution of the hobby. So I don't want to discourage the guys that are just getting into the hobby because I think um, they they need that excitement. They need that excitement to learn and understand and and be able to do step up to the next level. But you know, once you get to a certain level, what do you do? What do you do with this hobby? Are you just flying for yourself? Are you flying for other people? If you're flying your for yourself, are you just um, why are you posting to YouTube? If you're flying for other people, are you enjoying yourself? So those are the questions I've been struggling with myself these past couple of weeks, you know, and just going out to the beach and just flying. I flew one pack. I've flown one pack in the last probably month. And it was just enjoyable. I just went out and I said, yeah, I'm going to fly. Uh, I, I flew and that's it. You know, no, nothing special. I didn't think it was a, a particularly interesting flight in terms of, of, of tricks or anything like that. But the light was good. It was a nice location. I wasn't trying to st stretch the range limits or anything like that because I just put the quad together and um, wanted to make sure it was going to work before I you know, went out and did anything really crazy. And I didn't really feel like swimming that day, so it was already pretty damn cold. So, yeah, I, I just went out and flew, and I enjoyed it. And I posted it, and people seemed to like the video. And what what can I say? I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't want to put out stuff that, that that's 
half-assed, to put it that way. Uh, I want to put out something that's good, that, that calls people's attention, that, that, that people enjoy. And to be able to do that every week, I, mean, I, think, I think people get tired. I, I myself... I can say, honestly, I don't watch very many FPV videos. I watch maybe maybe two to three a day would be probably about my max. And I, I've noticed even in my subscription feed that the number of FPV videos from people are going down as well. So there's that. What do you guys think? You guys burnt out? How many FPV videos do you watch a day? Do you watch FPV videos? Apart from your own, of course. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm my own worst critic. I watch my own videos and I say, oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, two to three. Yeah. <laughs> Peter says, should I post a video? It's been four months. Have you flown, Peter? Two to three and more vlog reviews than actual flights. Yeah, I think I think that's about right. I, I don't do a lot of vlogging. I don't watch a lot of vlogs because the, the people don't interest me that much. Um, I don't really care what Lidrib is doing. Sorry. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, the, the vlogs don't interest me as much. I like to watch. Um, yeah, music related videos. Yep. Um, I do watch a lot of music or actually I listen to a lot of music videos that I've got subscribe to a bunch of channels. That's where I get most of my music from. Um, basically stick that in a playlist, which is my my, my go-to playlist. Um, let's see. I I mainly watch on YouTube. I'm, I watch travel vlogs. So I'm watching people like... Um, I'm, I know I mentioned this before. Sailing... Sailing Delos, or SV Delos, something like that. Um, Sailing La Vagabond, uh, Gone with Winds, uh, travel vlogs, things like that. I watch, um, every once in a while, I watch a Casey Neistat video, just because, well, he annoys me, but, you know, he does good videos. Um, I watch... Uh, a couple video guys. <laughs> Gons watches Long Range Corner every sa every Saturday. Uh, <coughs> good answer, Gons. Good answer. Yes. Um, I watch. Let's see, music. Suicide Sheep. Obviously, everybody gets their music from there these days. Um, yeah, I could answer, Peter. <laughs> uh, Steel, I don't watch very much. Tom, I don't watch very much either. I, I like his videos, but I don't watch him very much. This is weird. And Berg, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Music. Suicide Sheep. Yeah, everybody gets their music from Suicide Sheep. Um... Cloud Kid, he's good. He's got some different music, kind of uh, more banging stuff. Um, Zito, X-K-I-T-O, if I remember correctly, is another one I watch for music. Um, Trap Nation and various other channels. Um, let's see. What else do I watch? That's, that's about it. I don't watch too much FPV radio control related stuff unless it's something that really captures my interest. Something that um, something that, that, that says, yeah, um, 
I'm going to be looking at this piece of equipment or I'm going to be, I can see how that would fit into something that I'm going to use. So I get a lot of my news up through the Facebook, Facebook groups and not, I don't know. Facebook has been kind of annoying me recently. Uh, I find myself spending too much time on Facebook and not enough time doing what I should be doing, which is work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, Facebook is good and bad. So I haven't been on Facebook much. I mean, at least not interacting with too many people, throwing out random comments here and there. But for once in a while, it's useful. I will say that I did ask in Tiny Whoop about what options there are for long range flight controllers for the Inductrix FPV Plus. And unfortunately, they didn't give me very good results. I think I'd have better, better luck asking in, I don't know, probably long range hooligans or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, so far, the, the one guy that responded says basically throw it away, sell it to somebody else and buy something that's decent. I'm not going to, I'm not going to invest too much money into this. I think it's just something that I'm going to use for a hoot and a giggle. So my, my idea was to stick uh, Crossfire Nano on it and do some long range you know, the, the Rotor, Rotor Riot style long range. Got a place around here where I could probably do that. I think this would, it'd probably get blown away with the wind, but yeah. Maybe if I get a nice day, I could do it. Yeah, so... That is my thoughts. One way whoop. There we go. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not worried about the GPS. Uh, I don't need GPS to fly long range, man. Jeez. Especially the long range that Rude Riot does. They were calling it long range, and I think Steel and Noak hit it with 2.4 gigahertz. That same spot, that exact same spot, they flew it with 2.4 gigahertz control. So long range, nah, not happening. Yeah, what else? What else do I have to mention? Nothing, I think. <laughs> that is it for news for me. That's my views on videos, FPV, the state of FPV at the moment. I worry about it. I don't know what was going to happen. How? I don't know if it's just me, my perspective. I don't know if it's just my perspective coloring my view of the FPV world right now, or if it's just a general boredom with the FPV world or if it's something more widespread. Uh, it's curious. Don't know. But I'm not finding that much excitement in the FPV, FPV world at the moment. Yeah, I like watching the long range guys. There's some guys that are doing some really cool stuff. Bryce Prestwich, of course, is has been doing really good stuff. Um, Mike Stevens has been doing good stuff. But apart from that, I can't think of anybody else that I... Ah, yes. Yes, there is somebody that I wanted to mention. Uh, when did I When did I fly it? I've never flown it, Gons. Never flown it. Principally because I don't have a transmitter for it. Let me see if I can find him. You need to find the guy. He's a Spanish guy. 
I'm not even sure if I can find his video. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen him, but... Yeah, Wild Willy. No, definitely not Wild Willy. It's possible I'm not going to be able to find him for you. I'm sorry, guys. Long range flight still raises a nice question. Which do you prefer, fun location or epic location? Have you seen my videos, man? <laughs> Jeez. I thought that would have been obvious. Personally, I like both. Fun and epic at the same time. I am looking for this guy, guys. Uh, if I have to see it, I'd have to, have to find it. I think I'd have to go to my other YouTube account. And I won't want to do that because I'll lose you guys. Damn, damn, bugging me now, bugging me, I want to show you. Let's see if it's on air views. Maybe I can find it on air views. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves. Is it where is it show me damn no nope. not on air views either crap oh well yeah when I find it I'll, I'll post it for you guys Because it's really good stuff. Yeah, coming back. Research. Research going good. Um, students, yes. Always new students. I've got um, two students that are working on things related to photogrammetry. So we're looking at how to, how to do photogrammetry in real time which is going to be a trick i'm not exactly sure how we're going to do that but if you don't know photo photogrammetry that's basically very well used within the drone industry at least the commercial drone industry uh basically you are taking lots of overlapping photos so taking photo then another photo then another photo then another photo all overlapping and then you look for points that are common between those photos. And then based on those points, you can do what's called bundle adjustment, which is basically a linear optimization on um, everything from where the drone is 
in the sky to the camera, how the camera is shaped, the camera lens is shaped, any aberrations in the camera, and how the points move in three dimensions. So basically it tries to minimize the error of all of those things and create a 3D model of these points in space. And from that you can build basically 3D models using nothing but pictures, flat 2D pictures. Very cool stuff. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, we're doing that for a project. Uh, we've got a, a project with the drones and using them to help inform uh, uh, forest fire. Yeah, people that are fighting forest fires. Um, typically, it takes two to eight hours, depending on how many photos and how big an area you're covering and how much detail you want to do this process to actually find the points, then do the matching and then do the, the, the bundle adjustment. So it's quite labor intensive, uh, processor intensive. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to do that in a massively parallel uh, system like GPU. Um, so we're trans trying to translate that algorithm to the GPU and then cut out as much as possible. Uh, typically when they do bundle adjustment, they're basically thinking, yeah, it's a, they're looking at the generic problem. So it could be, you're looking just for 3D, 3D structures, any generic 3D structure, you can do photogrammetry. You can do, um, you don't know where the, the photos are in relation to each other. So we're looking at how to cut out as much of the problem as possible make some basic assumptions, um, maybe have the camera model already built in, uh, have the the GPS coordinates built in so we basically know where the drone is, and then be able to eliminate those parts of the equation and then just worry about the, the actual 3D structure. So that's that's what we're doing. That's, a, that's the, the research that we're doing. Um, I've actually got the one project that's doing that for fighting forest fires or at least helping inform people that are for fighting forest fires and then probably we'll we'll post to another project that's doing more research and looking at the algorithms itself themselves so yeah that's what we're doing and yeah various other side projects that are going on in there we'll probably be starting up uh, a drone training program in uh, the university. So to be able to fly commercially, at least here in Chile, you're supposed to have a license. Now that's, it's a little bit um, ambiguous. Um, there's lots of people that say that you have to have a license to fly a drone here in Chile, but that's not really true. If you're under 750 grams you can fly a drone basically wherever you want uh yeah they don't want to die, try to crash into the dean's car obviously um so yeah um uh, under 750 grams you it's classified as a toy um that's the racing drones kind of get classified as that there is some question because they say um fiberglass or polyethylene or something like that. So there's a question of whether a 750 gram drone made out of carbon fiber would classify in that. And then over 750 grams, if it's in, um, if you're doing something related to public interest in a populated area, then you need a license. And those are, those are, those are the key points. Public interest, which is basically research, um, news, disaster recovery, or disaster relief. You need a license for that, especially and in, in populated areas. Uh, 
If you're outside of populated areas, or if it's not in public interest, the license that doesn't work is not for that. So it's kind of this gray area. If you're outside of public interest, if you're not in populated areas, you should be actually applying two weeks in advance or a week in advance to fly in a certain place. You have to give it for your flight plan. You have to give where you're going to take off, where you're going to land and duration of the flight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, yeah, anyway, so we're going to be doing a training regime for getting the license, which is in public interest, populated areas, doesn't really cover that much, but other people are offering it, people want it. So we're going to do like a little training and that we're going to offer that through the university. And probably do some, some training, you know, this is how you repair a drone maybe, or um, maybe we'll just talk about phantoms. I'm not really sure. It depends on what the users or they, what the people want to know. So yeah, those are the other things that we're working on. Yeah. Apart from that, how are you guys doing? What have you been doing? Peter says he's tuning. I'm going to be tuning as well. I want to get this nine inch flying well. Gons, how did your batteries go today? How many good batteries do you have? And do you have my 5S? I let Gons borrow one of my 5S batteries and he returned it in a slightly mutilated state. So I'm waiting for my replacement. Hint, hint. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> yeah, I know you're good for the guns. Next time I do an order, I'll whoo, throw in things. Next time I do an order of batteries, I'll let you know. You can order them together, and you can you can buy one of my batteries for me. Right, well, I think it's getting on time. My beer is done. The, the sand has run down, or the beer has run down, as the case may be. And yeah, cool. Let me know when you buy batteries again, Gons. I'll buy, I'll buy with you and save on shipping or something like that. Anyway, yep. So my beer is run down. My quad is still in need of some work so i'm gonna let you guys go and i'm gonna get on with this and finish this quad up and hopefully hopefully if it doesn't rain tomorrow fly it tomorrow so guys thank you for tuning in thank you for saying hi i gave a shout out to peter southwest kitty um francisco who else tuned in here J Tan, Jason, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Havoc as well. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. And, ah, Dennis! Showing up just in time, just as I'm leaving, man. Hey, Dennis! Anyway, yep, I'm going to jet, and I'll catch you guys later. Hopefully next week I'll be able to show you something. <laughs> Poor Dennis. You're, you're like my students. You, you arrive just as, as, as I'm letting them free. There's always typically that one guy that arrives just in time. Just as I'm saying, yeah, that's all you need to know. Right. Anyways, thanks guys. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>